In this video, I'm going to demonstrate some of the capabilities of VMD, uh, which is the visualizing software for molecular dynamics. Um, I'm working here from a uh, terminal window on my Mac rather than from Exceed on demand, but very soon we'll be uh, looking at VMD and that won't matter and VMD will look exactly the same as if you would launched it from a terminal window uh, using Exceed on demand. So to launch VMD, I'm going to change directory to the place where I expect to pick up uh, files that I want to look at. Um, and then I will um, launch VMD. And in a few moments, I will see the graphical windows of VMD opening. So on the right here is the visualization window, the window in which pictures will be made of the molecules that we're looking at. And in a moment on the left, we will see uh, the control window, the window in which we make various choices and, and choose what files to load and that kind of thing. So here's the main window of VMD, and the first thing we do is to load a molecule with new molecule. And then we choose which molecule file to open by uh, browsing, and here we will look in um, this folder here. Um, we start with a grow file, and, and in this MD job here, um, the grow file was basically the last snapshot that the simulation created. So the general approach is you load a snapshot of the system that you perhaps want to look at a movie of, and then you load the movie into the snapshot, as you'll see. So first we're going to load the final snapshot. It automatically figures out what kind of file that is. You see it knows that it's a Gromax Grow file, and so we can load it. And after a brief moment, you can see roughly what it looks like. Now, one of the things that's most important about VMD is being able to change the way that the uh, image appears, and, and there's a number of ways of doing that. Um, the very first thing I'm going to do is to change this uh, display from what's called perspective view, which is like very sort of zoomy looking, uh, to orthographic view, which is like looking at it from from far away, uh, and it preserves the geometry in a little bit nicer way. You see what I mean? It looks like now we're looking at it a long way away. Um, over on the right, if I want to look at this thing not from along the z-axis as I'm currently doing, but from the x-axis, and I can click over here and drag and be rather patient because I'm working on a, um, on a somewhat slow remote connection to the cluster. This response time works much better if you're uh, on campus and, and working with, the, uh, with the, um, the wireless or the LAN there. Uh, and so gently rotate this thing up so that I'm looking at it uh, basically from the front like so. And now you see that there's actually two particles in there. Um, another useful thing to do is to make a periodic boundary condition box appear, which I do by typing in the original command window where I launched VMD the, con the command PBC box. And now I get this blue box, which is the limits of the system. So the next thing I might like to do is to change the way that the molecules are drawn. Uh, so for instance, I might like for the two blue uh, particles there, which are, are basically large Bucky spheres, uh, C240 graphene rolled into a little ball, and I can change the way that different molecules are drawn here by creating representations. The default is that everything's drawn with lines, so there's a representation here called um, in which all of the atoms are selected and they're drawn with lines. 
So I can um, change that by choosing um, a subset which can be chosen in different ways. For example, um, the residue name, Sol is what's been used here for the water, and C24 is what's been used for the, for the, for the Bucky spheres. So if I select in this representation that's already existing, um, res name Sol, then you'll see in a moment that we don't see the Bucky spheres anymore. And that's because they're not being drawn. And then I can create another representation in which I say res name C24 and now they come back again and you might say what's the point? And the point is because I can draw those atoms in a different way by changing the drawing method here to van der Waals spheres. And you can change the size of the sphere and so on and indeed the color and other things. Um, to highlight those molecules that you want to see and make the ones that you don't want to see disappear. So if you're looking at you know, an ionic solution, you may want to see the ions very prominently as van der Waals spheres, but the water not very prominently and so forth. Um, so there's a lot of, of uh, options here for exactly how to draw the, uh, the system, but that's just a little indication. And all those are found under this graphical uh, graphics representations uh, here. Colors gives likewise a, a way of, of choosing what atoms are drawn in what color and so there are various complicated choices there. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to load some data into this molecule. Highlighting the molecule here in the list, there's only one. Um, load data into molecule and now we choose not a grow file, but a trajectory file. So a TRR file. And we can load that trajectory. And it loads frame by frame. And this will take a certain length of time. I think there should be about 100 frames here. And one thing we notice is that there are a lot of spurious lines that come from having drawn the water molecules as lines which occasionally cross the periodic boundary condition and confuse VMD. So I should have remembered to change this before, but when the movie's done loading, we will um, go back to the representations to make those water molecules drawn not with lines, but with small van der Waals spheres, which has the similar effect of making the water tend to disappear, um, but uh, doesn't have this problem of the lines crossing the periodic boundary. So now the movie's finished loading, and we can go back and change the representation, uh, the first of the two representations, which was the water, to draw the water with van der Waals spheres, um, but with small ones. So we knock the size down progressively uh, by experience, I think around 0.2 is sort of a good size to make them disappear pretty completely uh, while still being vaguely aware that they are there. And at this point, we can um, play the movie. Uh, these are the movie playing controls and the play button is here hidden under this resizing key. So this is a fairly coarse time step of movie. The particles are moving a significant distance and you know roughly speaking what we can see is that the water is dancing around and so are the particles uh, tending to fluctuate in their positions with respect to each other. Um, as I mentioned before um, this movie would play considerably faster if I were not uh, operating on a, uh, on a remote uh, and rather slow uh, link to the cluster. Another important capability of VMD is the ability to save pictures and movies. 
That is done using the render command here under the file menu. There are different choices for how that should be rendered, um, including PostScript, uh, for example, and a snapshot of the window itself, and some experimentation may be necessary in order to um, get decent results. This particular set of default choices will prepare a single image. And so if I press start rendering, then I will, after an interval of time, have an image that can be saved to this file name, which the default of which is vmdscene.tga for Targa graphics, I think. I'm not sure why I have this little tiny one up here. Um, here I have the image that I've saved, and if I were to go and check on the files, which I, I will in a moment, I should find that there's a new file called vmdscene.tga. Finally, um, it is possible to make movies, um, which are basically flipbooks of snapshots, using the extension here called uh, Movie Maker, which opens a dialog box in which you choose the name of the movie, um, the number of steps in the trajectory, which we have 102 frames, so for example, we might decide we want to make a 10 frame movie. We can decide how long we want that movie to actually run. Um, let's see what other settings there are. The renderer is snapshot, which we were using before. Uh, we don't want to uh, vary there are movies in which you basically rock or move the single image around in certain ways so that you can kind of look at it from different sides. Here what we have in mind is, is a trajectory. And we were just told there that you can't choose how long the movie takes for this. The format is how it gets saved, so animated GIF, for example, can be dealt with by other more sophisticated movie programs later and converted to MPEG or what have you. So probably animated GIF is the best choice. And if we press Make Movie, it should start rendering successive frames, which will appear And underneath in this, uh, in this um, terminal window, you can see it is succeeding to render uh, the individual frames, which will eventually be combined. Now that the individual frames have been rendered, they get combined into a movie uh, called untitled.gif which is in the folder user slash temp where we could have put it in some other spot. Um, and now we're done with movie generating. So now I will quit this program and look to see whether we've succeeded to make any of the files. So here we see the vmdscene.tga, that's the single snapshot. And if we cd the user slash temp, um, then we should be able to find the movie untitled.gif right there. And if we um, if we look at that with ls.l, we can see we are indeed the owner of that. So I can move that movie uh, back to my uh, home directory slub, um, and then work uh, CHE597 colloids.
and then if I cd back to that directory, I find those two files. So that's how you make snapshots in movies using VMD.